Hey guys, in this video we're going to go over three things. Uh, we're going to learn how to use CN, and then we're going to learn how to use getLine with CN, and then we're going to talk about this uh, double error operator here, which uh, you might remember for, from some other videos we've done. Uh, and, we'll, and if not, we'll, you will probably see it in some videos in the future. So uh, to begin with, we, uh, we defined a, a character, called it my care, my char, an integer, my int, and then we've used our CN to get user input, and then this, this double error operator. Now, this can be overloaded and used in some other functions, but in this case, what it's doing is it's the first thing you're, you're putting in front of the error operator, you're telling it where to look. So you're telling it to look in the user input, and then the user input stream, and then the second thing you're given here on the other side of the arrows is where you want it to store that information at. So here we're telling it to, okay, get user input, and I want you to store it in my, my char. And then all we've got is printing out here, my char. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I've saved this, and let's go over, go over to the command line. I've got this all set up over here. Uh, let's go ahead and build and run this. Now uh, let's, let's pick a character here, go with F, hit enter, prints it back out to us. So it looks like it worked. Uh, now we could play around with this and we could type more than one character and we can see that it's just going to take the first character. That's all it's looking for. So that works great. Let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and move on here. Uh, we'll comment this out. We don't need this anymore. And let's go ahead and comment out this print statement. And now let's go ahead and get, let's use that my int. So now we're going to get a character and an integer. And then we're just going to print them both back out. So we'll save move back over to our command line. Uh, if you don't know how to use command line, if you, you don't remember or anything like that, there's a video on it, so feel free to check that out. Uh, we'll go ahead and build an executable file. Let's go ahead and execute. And now it's expecting a character. We'll give it one, and then we'll give it an integer. And we'll hit enter, and looks like it prints it back out to us just fine. So that's good. Uh, now let's play around with and, and see what else this does. So let's do the same thing again, but now I'm gonna do F and I'm gonna give it a space and do 16, try that. Works just fine. So remember that that error operator usually skips all white space. So it looks for the character, finds that and it saves it, and then it looks, it ignores white space, and it looks for a valid input and it starts there. Now, uh, another thing that's kind of cool about this, just to show you that it, this function is it's kind of smart. Uh, let's say we typed F and uh, some garbage here, just some more stuff, but something that's not an integer. And we'll just hit enter here. Now, you see what it does? It, it still pulls out the first character like it's supposed to, and then it's looking for an integer, and it tries it on this. And you can try this for yourself and, and put in some other stuff, but um, my understanding is that this this returning zero is just it returning, that's what it returns when it, it, it gets uh, invalid input. So it's looking for an integer and it doesn't find it. It's just going to return zero. And you could play around and put in a bunch of other stuff, but that's what you'll find. And this is uh, this is interesting because this is a situation where, uh, in theory, my int is still valid, right? We've, we've put zero there in that space. And so if we use my int later on, uh, it'll it's still a valid integer. And so that's something you want to be careful for and look for whenever you're getting user input and you're doing stuff like this. So, all right, uh, let's go ahead and move on a little bit further. And down here with this code, um, all I wanted to show you here is I've got an, a series of if statements. And I just want to show you that whenever you save um, a number as a character or as a string, that the value is different than if you save it as an integer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run that code, this code again, and I'm going to type, uh, we'll say five. I'll type five for my character and for my integer. And we see here that if it's if my character is greater than my integer, they ask you value of char is greater than int. And uh, else if my char is less than my int, the ASCII value is less than integer value. And then else, uh, see out, they are equal. Okay, so we would expect if it saved these both in, as, as the same uh, the same value that it, they would be equal. So we'll go ahead and save that. I don't know if you can see that, it might be off screen. I did indeed save that. Let's go ahead and build an executable file and run it. And now let's go with uh, five. And I'll just, so you can see that I'm putting on different lines. Five, five, 
seem together and then we see it prints out the ASCII value for char is greater than int. So uh, anyways, you can see that those aren't the same. That five and that five is being read differently. One of them is being stored as a character and the other one is being stored as the integer. And I just wanted to, to show that. All right, so moving over here, uh, I've got an, another function here. Uh, I've declared a string, called it my string, and then I'm using getLine. This getLine function ex uh, expects two arguments. The first one is a stream. This needs to be a stream, and this is the input. CN is the input user stream. And then it always outputs to a string. So you always have to have some string declared, and then you have to have that here. Um, it will not output to an integer or anything else. Uh, and we'll cover more in getLine in future videos. Also note, there's an optional third argument here. And this third argument is what character you would like it to stop at. So the normal default argument is uh, really kind of tells you in the, in, the, in the statement of the function, it gets an entire line. So it reads until it gets to a new line and then it stops. But if you put in another character here, uh, it will stop. In this case, it'll stop on a period and this could be whatever you wanted. And that's, that's what it would read into. But for us, we're gonna get the entire line. Um, also, you know, I, I should more explicitly say this uh, double error operator, this extraction operator here, uh, this always skips white space of any type. And so when this starts reading in, it looks for my character. It'll, if there's any white space, if it's a tab, if it's uh, new lines, if it's a bun bunch of new lines or anything else, it'll read past those until it gets to the first character and then it'll save it. And then if it doesn't matter how much white space is after it, it's gonna keep reading until it gets to uh, some other input and hopefully it's valid if it's an integer and it'll, it'll um, then save it to my int here. So uh, just to more explicitly explain what those do. So anyways, we call get line, looking for user input and then uh, we're saving it to the string and then we're just telling the user uh, what they typed in. So uh, I've already built an executable file for this so I'll go ahead and run that. And uh, uh, you typed, uh, let's say, this is what I typed. How about that? Enter, sure enough, you typed, this is what I typed. Cool, so it works, doesn't really make any sense, but hopefully that explains get line and CN. If you're looking for uh, more information on how to uh, handle user input or to read in a file, we do have videos on that, so I encourage you to check those out. We'll see you next video.